welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. It is a delight to welcome you to this, the first day for this week of broadcasting here at Bible Tract Echoes. If at all possible, reach over, get your Bible, and join me. My Bible sitting open right now to the Gospel of Mark in chapter 16, the last chapter in the Gospel of Mark. We have walked our way through the book of Mark thus far, and uh, we come now to the last chapter, the chapter dealing with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What a great chapter. Well, let me begin with uh, asking you this question. Do you like details? Do you like details? Now, frankly, there are times I do like details, and sometimes I don't. For instance, when the doctor is going to extract an abscessed tooth from my body, I really don't want details. Just take out that tooth. It hurts me. But then again, if a guy comes and he's going to do a roofing job for me, going to replace my roof, he's going to give me an estimate and so on. I want details. I want to know exactly what are they planning to do? What are they not planning to do? I want to make sure, I want to ensure my, that my roof is not going to leak. So there are times I do like details and so, times I really don't necessarily care. Now, the Gospel of Mark gives us a very short account of Jesus' resurrection. But frankly, in this short account, it's just chuck full of details. God wants us to fully be be fully persuaded that Jesus both died and rose again bodily from the dead. You join me in the Gospel of Mark and chapter 16. This would be a great day if you're one who gets involved in text messaging at all. For you to get involved in text messaging me here at Bible Tracks Incorporated, I'm going to give you a message, a a phone number here by which you can use to text message me. That's the only thing it's it can be used for. I want you to text me the word gospel at the number I'm about ready to give you. And then I want you to give me some feedback on this broadcast, particularly this broadcast today. You can give me your evaluation of this. You can ask questions and so on. You text me the word gospel to this number. I'll give it now. I'll give it a couple of times now and a couple of times later on in the broadcast. But here's the number. It's area code 708-515-4086. Again, text me the word gospel to 708-515-4086. Now, when you do, I have my phone designed here so that when you text me the word gospel, I will begin to respond with to you with some simple questions that require minimal amount of, uh, of work on your part. Well, here's a great gospel track, one that we publish here at Bible Tracks Incorporated, and a great track for this week as we think about uh, our resurrection of Christ from the dead. This track is entitled Transformed. The resurrection of Jesus Christ transformed the lives of people, particularly his disciples. This gospel track deals with the transformation that the gospel makes in the lives of sinners, and in this case, in a particular person, the life of Mr. Don Price. He was a criminal, arrested in prison, but God saved his soul, transformed his life, and friend, he became a great preacher of the gospel. That's what the gospel does. Here's a great track, Transformed. If you have some people that need the gospel, some men, it's a great man's track right here, giving it to men. Let me send you this track, won't you please? At the end of my broadcast, and when I get all done, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give you three or four ways to communicate with us. You give me your name and address. I'll send you a sample packet free of charge of all of our English tracks. This one, Transformed, will be in that packet. All right? 
Come with me now, the Gospel of Mark and chapter 16, I begin at verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him, that is the body of Jesus. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Notice all the details. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. I'll stop reading right there. As I said, we now begin to look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We here at Bible Tract Echoes believe in the literal death of Jesus Christ, the literal burial of Jesus Christ, and the literal bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. The very physical body that died on Golgotha that was buried in the sepulcher, it's that same physical body that came out of the tomb. Obviously, we're taught in the Word of God that our physical bodies at resurrection are changed. Jesus' physical body, still physical, was changed, became a glorified body. It could then walk through walls as the book of John and so on talks about in some of the post-resurrection appearances of Christ. Now, my friend, we have come thus far in the Gospel of Mark. Let me kind of re uh, bring our brains back to uh, revisit some things. Mark, in chapters 11 through 14, those three chapters I call, those four chapters I called, Christ converging on the crucifixion. Christ converging on the crucifixion. Then beginning at chapter 14, verse 42, going on through the entirety of chapter 15, we have Christ confronting the crucifixion. And now, at chapter 16, Christ conquers the crucifixion. I have divided chapter 16 up into six parts, and each part I've given a title that begins with the letter A. On Wednesday's broadcast, I'll give you the, all six of them, but for right now, Let me just give you the first one. Covering the verses that I read, verses 1 through 4, I've given the word A for arrival. The arrival to anoint Jesus. It is amazing how much detail, as I said, we are given in these few short verses. As the women come to the tomb, we are given all kinds of information by the Holy Spirit. So to add certainty to the event of the resurrection. Being a man, I'm not really thrilled that only women came to the tomb that day. I really wish, frankly, that at least one man, one man would have would have loved Jesus enough to want to visit the tomb on that uh, Sunday morning. But but as we have seen, only women came. And God honored these women these that came that morning by allowing these women to be the very first to see the risen Lord. This, friend, is an honor that God gives to them, and it's an honor that I will fight to keep on these women in particular, and frankly, on all godly women in general. To all women who love Christ out of a pure heart, to you I say, you are blessed, and I honor you. Now, Notice some things here in these opening four verses of Mark 16. First of all, from verse 1, the Sabbath notation. The Sabbath notation. It is Sunday morning. Verse 1 tells us in our text that the Sabbath was now over. Also from verse 1, notice the spice notation. The spice notation. These women knew Jesus had absolutely died, and they came to anoint an absolutely dead body, not a living one. They knew Jesus had died on the cross. Then we come in the text, we see the sun notation. We're told in verse 2 that the women obviously started to head for the tomb before the sun arose, but they got to the tomb at sunrise. Now, frankly, if the sun had not been up, they could not have seen to do their work inside the tomb. The fourth thing I see here is the sepulcher notation. The women had planned for for seemingly everything except how do we get the sepulcher stone moved? They really needed some men to do that, uh, but uh, there was none with them, of course. 
It, it sure seems that these ladies were unaware unaware of the guard that had been set and the seal that had been put on the tomb. But notice the stone notation in verse 4. It was rolled away when they got there. Why? Why was the stone rolled away? We're going to spend Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday's broadcast on that stone. Let me stop here a moment. As we get into the resurrection story, how does the resurrection of Jesus Christ impact you? How does the facts given to us here in Mark chapter 16 about the resurrection of Christ begin to impact your life? Why don't you text message me? Tell me what you think about the broadcast today. I'm going to put a capstone on the broadcast here in just a moment, but let me give you that text messaging number right now. If you're driving, you need to pull off and get the number. Do not text while you're driving, please. But text me the word gospel to the number. Here it is. It's area code 708-515-4086. Again, text me the word gospel to area code 708 708- 515-4086. All right. Dear friend, you probably realize that the stone on Jesus' tomb was rolled away, not for the purpose of letting Jesus out. Remember, Jesus in his glorified body could walk through walls and so on. That wasn't the purpose of letting Jesus out. The purpose was for letting you and me in to see in. Jesus' body was not in the grave. Not then and not today. You and I are invited to confront the reality of Jesus' death, Jesus' burial, and Jesus' resurrection so that we might declare him Lord and Savior of our lives. Now, beginning on Wednesday, we're going to talk about that stone that got moved because we're going to begin to see that there are three options to that stone. The enemies of Christ wanted that stone anchored in place and unmovable because they did not want Christ to make changes in their life. The women just wanted the door ajar to let them in to do their work. They really weren't thinking about letting Christ out. But God wants that stone away. Oh, dear friend, because it moved away, Jesus Christ, honest to goodness, is proven to be the divine, the son of the living God, God in flesh who came to earth that he might offer his life a sacrifice. Because of the resurrection, we know for a fact that our sin, the payment of Christ for our sin, that if we receive Christ, that payment was sufficient, was enough to pay for our sin. We have a risen Savior as a seal that the sacrifice of Christ was accepted by Almighty God. And now, dear friend, you and I can have assurance That as we sang as kids, gone, 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 yes, my sins are gone. Are your sins gone? Have you received Christ as Savior? Christ died, was buried, and rose again. Since he did rise from the dead, he now has the right to be Lord and Savior of your life. Is he? If you've never made him Savior, you need to bow your head and ask him to forgive you your sin. Give him your life and say, now, Lord, because you're the living one from the dead. You paid for me. You bought me with your blood. Run my life. Give me a life pleasing to you. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.